Dear John, he was upstairs and he said, Scott? Yeah. He wanted to know who it was, I guess. And he said, I'm up here trying to pretty up and fix his hire. If he had a head of hire like I got, he wouldn't have to worry about it. <laughs> but anyway, the title of the sermonette is Free from the Law of Sin and Death. Let's look at Romans 8, 1 to 4. It says, there, verse 1, Romans 8, there is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, the one that are really converted, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That, you know, that right there, a lot of people said, I'm free from the law. I'm free from that horrible old law of sin and death. Did they have it right? Did they have a correct understanding about that? What the Bible's talking about? Verse 3, it said, For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. It was not the law was weak, it was weak through people's flesh. You know, Christ, the Bible, you know, before Christ magnified the law, it was just a physical thing, you know. You could say you was worshiping God, and in your mind you could be cursing God over some issue. You fleshly, you would be obeying it, but not spiritually. It was weak through the flesh, through people. God sent in His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. He's a human being. And for sin, for sin, condemns sin in the flesh. Is that what God is doing with us now? Getting rid of sin in the flesh. Yes, we'll see. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled or obeyed in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. But if you're just obeying God's law fleshly, if that's as far as you're going, you absolutely miss the point. Christ magnified the law to make it include the spiritual intent. We'll see. Now let's find out what, what we, we really want to see what law it is that we are free from. The law of sin and death. Let's look at uh, Genesis 2.17. Genesis 2.17. It says, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, this pictured sin, you know, disobeying God. You shall not eat of it, not to sin. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. That death, dying there, is talking about the second death. It's not talking about the first death. Everybody's born's got to face the first death. Just from growing old. But this is what the law that God is, we're free from. We've got to be free from the law of sin and death. If we don't, then we'll suffer that death, <coughs> the second death. We'll see. Genesis, uh, Romans 6.23 Romans 6, 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death. That's the second death, what the Bible's talking about. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what we're free from. From the, the end results of sin. Romans 6, 18. Let's look back a few verses back. Well, no, a few verses forward. Romans 6.18 Here it's talking about the same thing. 
being made free from sin. Sin does not bother us the way it did when we was unconverted. We're getting away from it. We're getting past it. Sin. Even though we're not perfect yet, I don't mean for you to believe that we're completely above sin because we can't be completely above sin while we're yet flesh. You've got to go on to the spirit level. You've got to be born again. It said, being made free from sin, you became what? The servants of righteousness. Well, what is righteousness? Psalms 119 and 172 says, all thy commandments are righteousness. That's what we're doing here today. Obeying God. But we're not yet perfect. Let's look at uh, John 8.32. John 8 and verse 32. Here Jesus speaking. He said, And you shall know the truth. That's the Bible. God's Word. And the truth or the Bible shall make you free. So we've got to understand what the Bible's talking about. We've got to live by it. Let's look at uh, the anyway the Bible. The knowledge of the Bible is what sets us free. Let's look at Matthew five seventeen to nineteen. Matthew five, beginning in verse seventeen. He said, hear Christ speaking, he said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Well, that's exactly what the unconverted people think. They've done away with the law. He destroyed the law. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill or obey. So, we see that he came to fulfill the law and obey it. Verse 18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. For whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So we see there, he is, a, he is talking about magnifying the law to where it was not just a physical thing. If that's all you got is a physical keeping of the law. you got problems. But anyway, Isaiah 42.21 Isaiah 42 and verse 21. It says, The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. Who's that talking about? Jesus. He said, God said, I am well pleased with, you know, with you are my son and I am well pleased with for he, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Christ magnified the law in Matthew 5, 17 to 19. That's what he was doing. He was making it to work. God said in the law you shall not steal. But Christ said don't even think it. You know, you shall not commit adultery. Don't even think it. The law is much greater now, at least to converted people, than it is that it's magnified. Isaiah 42, 21. Christ magnified the law and made it honorable. Well, God's law is honorable in us. But in the world, it's rejected. So, today, God has not called most people. That's why they're not here now. God could have this basement full and overflowing if he wanted to call that many. So God has not called most people. They remain unconverted and deceived. Thankfully, God
God will deal with many people after Christ returns. Then their future salvation waits for them. They must also be set free from the second death penalty as we have been. Through Jesus Christ who died for us. Remain loyal to God. God is loyal to us. Forsake sins, and through God we will live. Willfully return to sins, and through God you will die the second death. 